this is fun. Yeah. You guys don't do anything small, do you? What? <laughs> what? It's not even. Yeah. Like, what's the point? <laughs> go hard or go home. to the next episode of the Kingmaker podcast and we're excited to have a couple key members from the redacted team and I'll, I'll let them introduce themselves but before that Alejandro how are you doing today hey what's up it's good to be back I'm really I would, I'm really excited to learn more about redacted and see what they're bringing to the ecosystem and the new products that are coming out this month yeah it's fun to see as uh, as being convex maxis, um, all the different Lego pieces and, and the new things that are going to be available to us. So without further ado, um, would like uh, y'all to introduce yourselves uh, from the redacted team. Who do we have today? Yeah, what up, guys? Uh, it's Sammy, um, one of the founding members of the redacted project, um, <clears throat> mostly focused on like the business side of things and then we also brought along like kp who's also one of the founding members that's more focused on the technical side of things hey everybody um kp uh i'm working smart contracts at redacted and uh have been um participated in redacted uh, when it had its its initial sale and uh you know liked what the team was doing and joined and um I'm currently leading efforts uh, on Pyrex with Never Defined and CG. Awesome. Well, I, I don't want to dwell too much on the past, but I would like to start at the beginning um, just briefly. So what was the origin story with uh, y'all being a couple founders? What was the origin story? Where did Redacted start? And why did it start? What problem were you trying to solve? Yeah, so... Redacted is this um, sub DAO of Olympus that use, utilizes like the bonding mechanics for like a different purpose than just um, <clears throat> I guess like you know being a reserve currency, right? Um, <clears throat> I think uh, when trying to do something like Redacted, and I'll get a bit into like the vision and thesis and stuff. Um, the mechanics of the protocol, like the bonding and the view basis and stuff were kind of critical in achieving what we wanted to do, right? So the protocol itself aims to be like a meta governance DAO that sort of builds out these like additional like governance infrastructure tooling kits um, that like any protocol can leverage and utilize. And I guess um, <clears throat> in the like infancy of the project, uh, there was like a big focus on you know, growing the treasury and getting that up to speed to where it needed to be, to where we could be considered like, you know, a, a serious player in, in the project, right? So um, I think there's like, you know, obviously like the like the typical yield farming launch mechanism, like getting your token liquid, all that sort of stuff. But for us, you know, um, <clears throat> we wanted to like bring assets into the treasury. And I think uh, using the Olympus mechanics, like we were able to like, get like a really good head start on that in this like, you know, like two, three month bootstrapping phase. Um, we are like transitioning out of it, but like, you know, in the beginning, this is sort of what we did, right? So essentially <clears throat> the protocol revolves around like a rebasing token butterfly. Um, and we open up these, these bonding programs where users can bond like very influential governance tokens, um, FXS, CVX, more. Uh, and a user can essentially give up their tokens for the butterfly token at a discount. Um, and then in order to manage dilution for like all these assets that are flowing into the treasury, uh, the holders of the butterfly token are essentially getting rebased to make sure that they own the same percentage of the network as they did before, like potentially like a massive bond um, comes into the protocol and like a big mint comes up. Um, so, you know, like we're using this like mechanic, uh, we put ourselves in like this bootstrapping phase where we were just like building out the treasury as of date, uh, de like depending on the date, like today it's like over a hundred million. <laughs> uh, 
Um, but yeah, like we were able to build the treasury out to be like, you know, one of the strongest in the space um, <clears throat> in terms of DAOs owning CVX. Uh, we're up there in like the top three or four. Um, some of the other assets were out there in like the top two or three uh, ones that we see like have like big growth and stuff. And we're really able to like, you know, now um, start launching, you know, more uh, sustainable like uh, revenue drivers, I think, to the protocol and sort of phase off from this like extremely aggressive um, bonding slash like uh, dilution management uh, that was done through like the V base like the V base model. Okay. Yeah. No. I def. I've been definitely seeing the transition you guys been um been putting into place and the switch you're doing. And I I definitely thought it was interesting, and a lot of people are excited about it. Um, that we, you're you're the one of the most known out of, I guess that of the forks is not you. I guess you can call your. I don't know if you want you consider yourself a fork, but um of the models that are successful, you're like. I'm pretty sure you're the mo most successful one besides probably Wonderland. Well, when they were around. Um, so yeah, thanks, thanks for going a little bit deeper into that. I think yeah, I think it's fair to like call like the protocol of a fork in like the first instance, right? You know, everything we've built since then has been um, <clears throat> novel smart contracts, and actually like the original code like had to be tweaked a little bit to like you know accept. Um, like not stable coins, right? To like work around um, more uh, like reflexive assets. And I think, um, <clears throat> you know, we're not really like the type to like leech off of people's others ideas and stuff, which is why we work like directly with Olympus on this and stuff, right? Um, so I think like, you know, I think it's fair to call like the initial instance of the protocol, like a friendly fork, yeah. So uh, a couple things that, uh, you know, I just want to clarify my own mind. Um, or, or some of the things that uh, might be challenges, uh, you know, placed uh, towards Redacted out there is, you know, why, you know, coming from, you know, TradFi looking at uh, maybe an ETF, uh, you know, as an investment, um, why, why should Butterfly trade above the uh, net asset value? Uh, what are you bringing to the table to, uh, you know, to, to bring that value Cool. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I think DeFi is one of like the few verticals of the whole crypto space where you're able to point to um, like core fundamentals that you could like maybe compare to something like ChatFi and give like fair valuations to projects. Um, <clears throat> for what it's worth, like our treasury is like 100 million of assets that's not Butterfly, right? Um, which makes it like one of the like strongest like treasuries in the space. Um, <clears throat> and I think like when you think about like protocols that were using these mechanics that tried to be like reserve currencies, you'd want to enforce that narrative of like uh, making sure the token trades at like a sustainable like uh, valuation based on the NAV. Um, but, you know, Redacted doesn't really try to do that, right? So Redacted is not trying to be like a reserve currency or something. Um, <clears throat> Redacted simply leverages the mechanics for like a different purpose. Um, and I think there's like a bunch of things that go into the protocol. Yeah, I mean, we've trade we we've traded around like two x above the treasury backing since since launch, right? Um, give or take, um, and I think there's like a good reasoning for that. So the protocol right now is generating um, somewhere between like ten to twenty million dollars in revenue a year just based off the treasury alone, and um, obviously there's like potential upside in the assets that are within the treasury compared to like a reserve currency protocol that uses the same um, levers. Um, where it's mostly stable coins and ETH and ones that potentially don't have the same upside as the, the assets that we're capturing. Um, I think it goes a bit deeper with something like the FXS that we've like locked up for like four years or something or the CBX that we've locked up. Um, you sort of like can imagine Butterfly is like a liquid way to access those tokens underneath it. Um, and then again, like beyond uh, the potential upside and revenue generation of the treasury, uh, there's like more to the project, right? So we're releasing... Um, <clears throat> new sort of like products within the ecosystem um, like Hidden Hand and Pyrex uh, that allow the protocol to sort of like tap into different revenue streams. Um, so I think like, you know, it's, yeah, like not to comment on like valuation and stuff, but I think it's like, 
uh, not a project that's like trying to peg itself to any sort of like nav or anything like that, right? Um, <clears throat> we're not really trying to enforce the butterfly token to be pegged. And then, you know, going a bit further into the future with like the launch of like V2 and stuff, um, <clears throat> the, the, the protocol is shifting away from like a staking mechanism to like a locking mechanic, right? Uh, but the locking mechanic is a bit tweaked in the sense that there will eventually be two locking, um, there'll be two lockers, right? So one of them will be RL and the other will be GL, R for revenue, G for governance. Um, and one way we can make sure that like uh, people are getting what they want out of the project uh, at like a better rate than let's say like the vanilla tokens by using these two locking mechanics. So what it essentially does is it splits supply in half, let's say. And if a user is only looking to generate the yield and revenue that's generated by like the whole ecosystem, the products, the treasury, et cetera, they can lock into RL and they sacrifice the governance rights of the underlying treasury to lockers of GL, where GL does vice versa, right? They they so they sacrifice like the revenue and such of like the protocol for the governance rights over the underlying treasury. Um, <clears throat> this means that there's like two very interesting factors at play and like two different uh market sentiments on what the value of butterfly is, uh, which makes it a bit complicated, but at the same time, like, you know, we're a DeFi native project. We're not trying to make, um, we're not trying to make DeFi for your mom here. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I mean, like, you know, if majority of like retail, let's say like locks up for the RL so that they can earn like the yield and the revenue based on the products that we're releasing, um, then this opens up like an interesting sector where let's say like 20% of Butterfly locked up in GL can access like 100% of governance rights over the treasury. Um, so it's hard to point to, uh, I guess like um, KPIs and OKRs that like TradFi funds like try to hit in terms of like justifying like the valuation of their product. Um, but I think there's like a multiple different ways to look at it and see, uh, I guess like how you would value something like this. And I'm definitely not going to um, recommend this podcast episode to my mom. Damn it, Sammy. Uh, but uh, yeah, just speaking to that premium that's uh, baked into uh, the price, right? I think the team has done an incredible job um, like with the marketing efforts and being able to uh, maintain like the attention of uh, our users because we're constantly shipping. And, um, you know, we're not, we're not just resting on our laurels and and just just sitting on our treasury hoping that it'll grow we're actually creating new value for the space and you mentioned marketing uh, i must say you all are the best in the business your videos uh, redacted radio uh, love your podcast the production value is top notch um the hoodie that was going around on twitter yeah Everyone wanted the hoodie. <laughs> I remember that was a couple of yes, weeks ago. Yes, the hoodie was awesome. So, so talk to talk to us a little bit about that. Uh, where where did the uh, vision come from to uh, to build such a brand? Yeah, be, um, like how you named it, the style, your tweets, and stuff like that. What made you decide to go this way when you started developing? Yeah, I mean, so. Developing product? <clears throat> The cartel name comes from like the way I guess we see like the DeFi economy. I think a lot of people try and like think it's like like a hostile cartel or something. But like you know, cartel is like a very common business term when you think of like uh, different structures like oligopolies, monopolies, and stuff like that. You have cartels too. Like it's not. Anyways, that's where like the cartel name comes from. And then redacted uh, was sort of like this like name we were sitting on. It was originally going to be like butterfly cartel. It's kind of like a shit name when I think about it. But like uh, it was called like redacted at first while we were sort of just like building the hype and stuff. And then like people said, we should just keep it. I mean, you know, a lot of things just like come um, on the fly. And I think like the, I think like branding is like really important in the space. Like I think, like I said, like we're not necessarily trying to appeal to <clears throat> some of the same market that like the others are trying to appeal to. Um, and when you have the flexibility of being DeFi native, uh, you can be really expressive and flexible with like, what you want to do with like your brand and the way you want to communicate your your project and vision, um, which gives us like a lot more like creative freedom to like, you know, uh, experiment and have fun with what we're doing. Um, because, you know, it's a very nerdy, it's, it's a very nerdy protocol, right? Like it's not um, something very simple where like, yeah, it's not like a very simple product. Um, and we recognize like the complexities and stuff. 
uh, that come along with what we're trying to build. So like the brand is one of the few things where we can just like have fun and um, be creative, I guess. Yeah, I think this is one of the teams that I've, a few teams I've worked with where they're not just interested in forking and rehashing stuff. Like we're constantly trying to, um, you know, break new ground and, and try to improve on what's uh, currently available. So one challenge also that comes up in, in the Convex Discord in, in conversations about um, a variety of the DAOs um, who, who are big holders of uh, CVX and, and ultimately uh, vote lock CVX. But uh, the caution is be careful on who you might give your CVX tokens to uh, as retail CVX holders. Um, Alejandro and I are, are those retail types. What, what would you say to us as, uh, as retail folks? on, uh, you know, why would we give you our uh, CVX tokens and, and what products might you have coming in the future that uh, we'll be interested in? Yeah, so this is like a great opportunity to like show Pyrex, but I mean, we'll, we'll get into Pyrex and what this means, but like, um, <clears throat> I think like every DAO is like accumulating CVX for a different reason. So you have um, something like the Frax and Lunas of the world that is like trying to accumulate the CVX with like a focus on making their underlying product uh, more liquid, the staple coins. Um, you have something like Badger, which leverages it as like sort of like this booster for um, making CV, like making Bitcoin vaults on curve um, liquid and have um, more yield to extract out of it. Um, and then you have some people like maybe like urine and stuff that like, you know, want to make sure that the yield they're generating on their product is like extra high. Redacted comes at it from a bit of a different angle where <clears throat> we're more focused on like, you know, making like governance liquid, I'd say. Um, obviously right now, the current focus is on getting the revenue up and making sure that it's like a formidable beast um, in <clears throat> the treasury sense of like DeFi. Um, but there's very, there's multiple ways to like leverage uh, your CVX or other assets like within Redacted, right? So if you're someone that like maybe just wants to see the tokens uh, liquid and see the potential upside of it like you know i'd say like bonding is the best route um, but then you have something you know like obviously like we've heard like these concerns and stuff before which is why we're addressing them through pyrex right so i'll let like kp talk a bit bit about pyrex and all the different ways that you can like leverage your cvx through like redacted using this this new um, infrastructure tool yeah thanks Amy. um so first off i mean major like respect for the convex team uh, we're not trying to create something to displace them. Um, we're trying to operate similarly to how other uh, services like the union are are extending, um, you know, the value that Convex provides to users. So, like that, just want to preface with that because we're here to uh, add more value, not you know try to take anyone away from the community or anything. But um, yeah, I think the OGs. Uh, like that sound advice, right? Like be very careful with who you, I guess, uh, give custody to for your CVX because, you know, you could potentially lose it, um, you know, due to security risks. Uh, and, uh, you know, one of the things that, I'm not gonna really gonna get into it, but I get we're, we're definitely very security conscious. We're um, auditing our contracts uh, with two different auditors and integrating a lot of security tools. But um, so Pyrex, uh, was I dated during that whole crazy uh, drawdown that a lot of um, you know lockers might have seen at the beginning of this year, where you know Convex or CVX went from like sixty dollars to fifteen dollars, and um, you know we were like, well, what could be done that would help you know people who who want to participate in the the protocol but don't want to you know who can't afford to you know suffer these losses, right? Like th there has to be something that could be done for people who can't. I guess stomach stomach that that sort of drawdown. Um, so that's where Pyrex came in, or that's where Pyrex began. But um, you know, typically when I explain Pyrex to people, I like to first like describe the 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 status quo. So with Convex, um, you know, you have CBX and you can lock it with the protocol. Uh, it's it's locked for seventeen weeks. You don't receive a token, so you you're unable to transfer it or OTC it. Um, you know, basically unable to exit your position. Um, and in return for locking your CVX, you get emissions in the form of 
uh, convex curve and bribes every two weeks, right? So with Pyrex, um, the differences are one, you lock your CVX perpetually, um, but you can also redeem it at any time. So we're not trying to be a convex for convex. Like we're, we're, we're allowing you to get back your CVX if you want to. Um, the goal is also to get uh, your annual yield to be greater than or equal to whatever convex is currently offering. And we're able to do that by partnering with other amazing actors in the convex community, like the union. Um, they've been, you know, they've definitely put us through the ringer. And I think we came out the other side, you know, really, uh, yeah, perfectly fine. Um, but, uh, so that's like the general differences between, I guess, locking CBX or convex and Pyrex, right? Um, but we take it, we extend it a little bit further, uh, by offering users different modes, kind of like in a game where you have easy mode, normal mode, hard mode, et cetera. Um, I'll just explain easy mode. Um, but uh, so easy mode is where we we compound your CVX into more CVX. So you deposit CVX, you receive shares to a vault. Um, if, if you've used the union, you would be very familiar with this because we're actually working with them. But um, each uh, over time, the CVX that you deposit uh, will increase because okay, so you, you get shares to the vault, um, but the, the the CVX that those shares are entitled to increases as we. Uh, as the uh, the vault claims rewards and turns them into more CBX. Um, so yeah, you're basically just, it, it's like a, like, yeah, just sit back and collect more CBX. Um, so that's easy mode, right? And so, so, I guess we, so just yeah. to clarify, easy mode is I deposit my uh, CBX. It, it basically is a pounder and I get, you know, uh, increased yield on that CBX. I get more CBX back, correct? Yeah, exactly. Okay. But um, what's great is uh, instead of, so, so for example, if anything were to um, happen again, like what we saw in the, in, over the past three months with, with CVX's price, you could actually exit, or you could sell off your, C, um, your shares at any time and they should be trading on par with CVX's market price. Um, we'll be providing liquidity and we'll uh, be putting in certain efforts to maintain PEG as well as working with uh, partners to do so as well. So, um, you know, right now, if you're like, okay, well, uh, you know, I locked in, uh, locked my CVX, it's it's currently at $30, it goes down to $20 and you can't really sell it, right? If you, I mean, with the, uh, the current way of locking CVX. Um, but with Pyrex, if you lock in your CVX, you'll receive some sort of token that is a, rep a representation of CVX itself. Um, which should be trading close to market value because, uh, because it, it'll be liquid and it'll have basically the same uh, benefits. Do you want to talk about hard mode? Yeah. Okay. So hard mode, right? Um, <laughs> uh, and yeah, I, I feel like it's it's yeah. We're trying to break it down into these different modes. There there really is a lot of. Uh, I mean, so many things you could do, right? Like, um, even with easy mode, you could leverage your shares. I mean, we're 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 gonna create a um, a fuse pool with Rari, and uh, you know, the idea is you'd be able to deposit your UCBX or PXCBX and be able to borrow against that uh, the collateral value. So stuff like that you can't yeah, things like that you can't currently do, right? Um, and you know, I guess the idea, and we'll. I think we're going to be building out a lot of interesting ways to kind of like make it just one click. So one click, like 10 X leverage or something w without being liquidated. I mean, I don't, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, but hard mode, right? Okay. So if you don't want, if you're someone who's like a more advanced user, you could deposit your CVX and not auto compound it in a vault. So what, what you, what would happen is you'd get PX CVX tokens back, which are tied um, to your, your underlying, uh, to the, your CVX deposit. Um, and you could stake it with us, which essentially locks it, um, by locking it. I mean, like you can't use it for, to redeem CBX, um, but you lock it and you can get future bribe tokens. So because we know that, um, you know, the, the, the CBX will generate like a fixed amount of bribes in the future, we're able to, uh, give you those tokens, which, um, you know, are, are tied to the bribes in the future. It's almost like lending. Uh, 
I don't know if it's like, I mean, um, they're sort of like features, but the, yeah, they're like features. I mean, you basically have a, like a, have a note that is associated with assets that will be delivered at some time future. Sorry, my dog is going to die. Um, but uh, you have these tokens, which you could use to burn to re redeem the underlying bribes. Um, but you prepay for these futures. Well, you don't really prepay, but yeah, I hope. I hope. So basically you have... Uh, like, I mean, it know. creates... Okay, I'll, I'll take a stab at it. Like it creates um, <clears throat> this like exotic liquidity market around um, the notion of like bribes and stuff, right? So a user could... Um, lock up these these PX, CVX tokens for a certain amount of time and get a, a, a future note of like what these bribes would be worth. And they can trade them on a futures market that's natively integrated into the protocol um, <clears throat> that lets them like get the yield upfront um, and speculate on what they think the dollar per VLCVX they are gonna get on a specific volume round will be. Um, and yeah, it sort of like creates this like new um, speculation market around um, like VLCVX that wasn't once there. Um, I think like one important thing to add around like Pyrex is like, I think the reason a lot of people don't like liquid wrappers is because um, the underlying collateral of these wrappers is used for benefits that like uh, help the protocol uh, that's like issuing them. And yes, obviously like this is a new revenue driver for us, um, but at the same time, um, <clears throat> if your user wants to like use the governance of the CVX while it's liquid, they can also do that. So we don't ask you to just, like um, submit or sacrifice the governance rights of your assets um, through Pyrex. And this kind of comes back to like your OG question of like, why should I lock with you guys? Uh, I think like the better way to frame it is like there's multiple ways to like give your CVX to us. Um, and again, like using this like spectrum, you can keep it, you can use it as a liquid wrapper and keep all your governance rights and use it for the yield and speculate on the yield, all that sort of stuff. Or you can go, um, to the other side of the spectrum where you essentially, uh, trade your CVX for butterfly, uh, natively within the protocol. Yeah. Now, you know, why Sammy does the marketing and stuff, but, um, just kind of touching on what, um, or kind of, uh, revisiting the uh, features notes. Um, I, I, I think this is a point of confusion for a lot of people. And usually the, the main question that we're asked is like, why would a retail user care about this? And um, I guess the example that we like to provide is, okay, so you deposit your CVX right now and you get to claim bribes every two weeks over the span of four months, right? Um, that's with Convex. But with Pyrex, um, you could deposit CVX, stake your PX CVX and get tokens that represent the bribes over like let's just say a year um i mean it could be more or less but so you get those tokens that represent bribes for a year and you could sell them um on our marketplace and be able to realize all of that liquidity up front so instead of waiting for four months to let's just say you're, you're gonna make a thousand dollars over the span of four months with with convex um from bribes so yeah thousand dollars with convex over four months um split up every, you know over the, every two weeks right you would collect uh, parts of that over every two weeks. But with Pyrex, you could um, mint all four months of tokens up front, the $1,000, and probably sell it to someone, um, you know, on day one uh, for like $800. So there is going to be a discount because, um, you know, the person who's buying it would have to, uh, it would basically be giving up. Um, so you'd be selling, there some is a, like time value that, that is uh, considered. I mean, we're letting the market decide. I mean, who knows? Like maybe it's one for one, but most likely the market will price in um, or will consider the fact that those tokens are <clears throat> not redeemable immediately. And it, I think not to like jab on this too long, I'm sure there's like another question, but like coming back to the, the that note about like being very flexible with something like Pyrex and letting sort of like the market decide how best to use it. I think like, yeah, like you incorporate um, different aspects like the union into it, you incorporate different aspects like fuse into it. Um, and then it can really be whatever you want. So it's sort of like this tool to let users like leverage their VLCVX in any which way that they want, leveraged future notes, simple liquid staking, however they want, um, just through um, <clears throat> like essentially tokenizing like the VLCVX. So uh, I see a flywheel within a flywheel here. So um, I, I take my stack. I uh, get the futures for an entire year for, uh, 
you know, all the bribes I'm going to attain, I get it at 80% or whatever the market is, and I buy more CVX. Um, and then repeat yeah, the process, that, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you could do that, or you could, like, deposit it on views. And... Yep. I don't know. There's a, there's a bunch of different ways to, to, to yeah, play. There's... We like giving users options. There are a lot of them. Just to, can I, can I ask something really quick that I'm confused about that I'm, Maybe I'm too smooth brain for this. Yeah. I'm not a dev, and these topics are complicated. But it sounds like okay, you get the future, you can get a year yield up front. But just like you said, you want to keep it liquid. So like, if I do that, like I won't be able, like I will be locked in. Okay, I don't you guys don't say it's not locked in, but like, would you be locked in for a year? Because I don't think it would. It doesn't make sense to me. Like someone could go do that and then like pull out of pyrex whenever they want mm -hmm. because right no you're totally right like okay okay i'm just making sure yeah. uh, i'm just making sure because i was confused on that one point yeah yeah i think the better way to like examine like liquid in this sense is like let's say you only want like one week's of bribes you could do that or you could do three weeks of bribes or you could do a year long of bribes right so um <clears throat> to like leverage like the compound thinking like it can be liquid for like however long you want it to be to leverage like the futures um you determine a like a time frame of illiquidity to like get that yield up front yeah and just to expand on that so when we say liquid we're talking about transfer transferability of the tokens um and there will probably be markets for all the different tokens but okay so let's just say you law or you staked your px cvx for a year right um so by staking, you're unable to redeem the underlying, which is CVX, because we need to have that CVX uh, or retain custody of that CVX for a year um, in order to actually mint or back the bribes that will be, um, you know, redeemed in the future, right? For that year, like that entire year. Um, but, in re but at the same time, we're also going to give you some other token representation of the um, staked PX CVX. So you could go and sell it to someone else. So... Let's just say you stake it for a year, you get this other token called SPX, CVX, and um, you can go and sell it in our marketplace. And someone might be like, okay, um, this is CVX that I basically can't, re it, this is like CVX that I can't get back for a year. I'll give you $10 for it. Let's just say the market, the, the current CVX price is $30. Someone will price in like a 60 or 70% discount because that CVX is basically locked up for a year, right? If that makes sense um yeah it makes it oh, yeah, makes that, sense yeah definitely yeah Th this is fun yeah. you guys don't do anything small do you what <laughs> what's it's not even yeah like what's the point <laughs> go hard or go home i definitely like what you guys are trying to do because i know there's a lot of people in the community that especially what i'm one of them that complained to keith here the other day is like damn like i see in the new rari um fuse pool though you could do curve positions earn yield while you can still borrow and all that all this stuff and i'm like damn all these different like curve options are coming out where they could borrow yet yeah, i'm locked in this position and like it would be really nice to have the option to i may not do it but it seems like if you guys are gonna do a, a fuse pool at some point in the future after this comes out you definitely you definitely will solve a problem that a lot of people will consider they consider on using mm -hmm. what's cool is like you still get so say for example you do uh decide to um you know collateralize your your um you know px cvx right you're still going to earn rewards so if you deposited like a thousand dollars worth of px cvx um you know you'd probably get a borrow like like the collateral value might be something like 50 or 70 percent or something um you can borrow 500 dollars worth of stable coins and then you're still earning the rewards that you would get from PX, CBX. So, so two other questions. One, where did the name come from? But the other one, uh, how does protocol make money on this? Uh, what's in it for uh, Redacted? Oh, God. Yeah, so the name, uh, <laughs> he's not here right now, but it, it's one of the other Redacted founders. Like, he, he uh, yeah, he's definitely the master when it comes to names and stuff. Shout out to uh, Marcel or, or whatever he's calling himself nowadays. <laughs> Okay, I mean, this goes back to like the like branding and stuff. But people like the cartel thing; like they think it's like a, um, <clears throat> yeah, they like the the cartel thing, and it's like Pyrex, like the official emoji is like the snowflake one. 
it's like pyrex is like used in trap houses to turn like uh coke into crack so it's like you're turning <laughs> your liquid cvx into liquid cvx yeah if in any feds are listening to this i don't know how i got here or someone may have added me uh but yeah um and then back to like how redacted went so this is like a greater like vision thing for um redacted where uh, like i said like we don't want to be as like uh aggressively diluting um people who come into the redacted protocol um with the bonding mechanism because i think we're past that stage of like bootstrapping and Pyrex is one of those the new ways that we can generate CVX um, natively within the protocol through minting and burning fees um, without having to uh, put up crazy discounts or crazy yield um, in order to make the protocol like work or su be sustainable. Um, so yeah, it, we view it as like another revenue driver. Yeah. Um, so we, okay. So one of the cool things I guess about Pyrex is we don't charge an upfront fee um like one of the services that we think has been really cool is like venmo i mean i hate to shout out like a centralized service but um it what's cool is like you know venmo came out of nowhere and they allowed users to transfer money from from you know to other to friends or whoever uh without a fee right so you send one dollar to somebody you know all that it only costs you a dollar um there's like no three percent fee or whatever that paypal had before um but under the service, they, they are doing other activities to generate value for their company. And and that's something that we're gonna be, um, you know, that's a similar tactic that we'll employ too. Like first and foremost, we want to give users the same yield as as with Convex, and then we'll figure out other ways to, you know, generate, um, you know, revenue for the protocol. So, and I think like one of the reasons why, um, I guess some of the people that we've spoken to in the the convex community like this is like we are willing to to take zero fees if if it meant um you know users uh like like in order to fulfill or uphold our promise like we're definitely user uh like yeah our goal is to just provide the best value and then we figure out um you know how to eat eat after users eat so so network effect is is what you're saying yeah oh yeah i guess it yeah i think um yeah i i think maybe the takeaway would be like um we'll we'll capture value um after providing users like a minimum level or acceptable level of value yeah you're providing utility and if you if if you bring if you bring utility and value to the network or to the ecosystem as a whole you're betting that um even if you don't charge a fee right now, you're still going to gain value in some way, shape, or form that's going to like increase the valuation of your protocol. I, I don't know if valuation is the right word, but um, at least that's what it sounds like to me. Like, like if As long as you fix a problem, you bring a product that's good, that people want to use, like, the fee, you can set up the fees later as long as you can find like a little niche niche no, i can't pronounce i can't english right now but um but you you get the general idea of what i'm trying to say i hope at least yeah yeah i i think you you captured it well um yeah and maybe the motto is just like yeah we'll provide users value first and we'll figure out a way later to figure out how to um to to receive some of that there's value. one thing there's one thing that while you were speaking, explaining that made me curious. So a lot of CVX holders, they have like, like a like a really good like. There's different strategies to play the game, right? But um, I'm wondering, like, will this the Pyrex product? Would it be friendly to other like product? I don't know, like Llama Air Force or like all these other protocols that have like that bring different strategies to like the ecosystem, like. Are you guys gonna still be bribing with the CVX you get, and like, and or like once you put the the CVX in the Pyrex product? Because I know like a lot of people, they the bribes they put in into the Llama Air Force, then they, it gets pounded automatically, or they just convert it automatically to like CVX or uh, not CVX, uh, CRV, FXX. Like, are you guys gonna be friendly to other? Yeah, there to are other teams and other protocols. 
yeah like with with this new product are you planning to like work with them or just like be a standalone if you get what i'm trying to say yeah we consider like the llama guys like our partners in crime actually so we do work really closely with them already yeah lou and benny are the best yeah they're really they're yeah they really are <clears throat> okay i think um one other cool thing that we're like ideating on is how to make this as least gas intensive as possible for people um <clears throat> so layer zero has some really dope like crushing communication layers where we can potentially um have nfts represented on layer zero that like uh trigger activities on mainnet so like that's the only other thing we're ideating on but don't dive too deep into that um until like you know the core mechanics and like the basic protocol is out yeah well we've been um making a significant number of changes also uh, recently that reduced gas by something like 20 to 50%. Um, so we're pretty proud of that. We're just trying to, um, you know, make sure users get as much value out of this as possible. Because, yeah, I think the little guys, um, you know, if gas were to ever spike, it's like, why it's not even worth depositing if, it, if the gas is costs as much as your actual, um, you know, the assets you're depositing, right? But um, I guess maybe... I'll leave off with them. Um, there are a lot of really interesting possibility possibilities with Pyrex that a lot of people aren't seeing. And um, we do very much see Pyrex as a primitive and we've already, we're, we're already working on uh, apps that we will be building on top of the protocol. So Alejandro, I, I do have one wrap up question. Do you have any other questions you want to ask them? I guess there's a common question that comes up when, whenever people speak of butterfly, and there's a common, there's a sentiment in, in the community that's like, why would I, if Butterfly's at a, a 2x premium, why, like, what's stopping someone from our community just buying all the same tokens, TOK, uh, CRV, FXX, and CVX, instead of just buying Butterfly? What would you have to say against people that use that argument against your protocol? <clears throat> so all of our like all of our ventures into new ecosystems go deeper than just the nav uh, or just the holdings we have over that protocol. So as an example, <clears throat> one of the ways that we leverage network effects to become on vampire attackable is through something um, like Pyrex. And um, that's like the value we add to the convex ecosystem. Um, when we venture off into something like FXS, we add like a value service like Hidden Hand along with it um <clears throat> that lets people like abstract away from just like the nav we hold over like uh or just like the holdings we have in these like certain ecosystems and like the conviction we have um so when we branch off into like a, a new DeFi vertical that we think is like very influential over the whole space it goes a lot deeper than just like the like assets we hold right when you think about like the capital efficiency side of it beyond like the network effect side um, <clears throat> like I said, there's more to the protocol than just like the assets we hold in the treasury. Um, I, like a counter argument I would make is like, you know, Uniswap is like a multi-billion dollar protocol um, that has no value accrual to the token or anything in the treasury other than uni tokens. So like that's one way I like to think about it. Um, from a fundamentals perspective, like um, <clears throat> if you look across like the entire DeFi space, we have stronger treasuries. Uh, we have a stronger treasury than most projects. Um, we have a stronger value accrual mechanism through the RL and GL butterfly product um, than most protocols. Um, <clears throat> so I think it again it goes a bit beyond this like two x premium thing. Um, but I think it's like a fair concern, right? Like I think it maybe it comes down to like a lack of like education on what we're building. Maybe because like a lot of the projects that leverage the same um, mechanics uh, as like this sort of like space that we're in are very simple in the sense that like it should be trading at like the fair value um, because they're not trying to do anything um, or have any sort of like way for the token holders to like appreciate what's going on under the hood. Um, so maybe it comes down to that, but I think it's like fair concern and criticism, but I, I think that's like, that's my counter argument is like um, on the uh, side of like, why shouldn't we just do this? It's like, again, it goes deeper. Like there's novel smart contracts that come along with every bonding program that we do. Um, and then on the second side of it, um, <clears throat> there's more ways for you to appreciate the value that we're building than just like locking up the vanilla tokens. So from a TradFi standpoint, it's a growth stock, not a value stock. 
there there is it isn't like i mean bitcoin is a bitcoin is a growth right stock, for what it's worth yeah that there when we were chatting with alu the other day he was talking about how some protocols have are based on hopes and dreams not necessarily and, and then ultimately some are hampered by uh, actually having revenue because then you actually know what they're worth but uh there there's so many new things that's uh, baked into the uh, into redacted it, it's exciting to see all the new i mean new i think i think this is like this is like a general like market overview it's like everything in the space has like a speculative premium attached to it right like we're not like a stable coin <laughs> um we're not a reserve currency there's no reason for our token to be pegged to like the limits or boundaries of like what uh some would consider like fundamentals of the protocol when others aren't right um that's kind of like the way i look at it the the, the added va the added value is that there actually is fundamentals backing the token <laughs> there actually is like a war chest behind the whole protocol and like core revenue drivers um that other projects do not have so that's actually more like an added value than it is right. like a fund you have token. substance you have a foundation so uh let me wrap things up with this question to uh both you sammy and kp it's 2025 your roadmap has gone exactly as planned no hiccups what's perfection look like perfection is redacted is the um black rock of DeFi, which has created <clears throat> a whole new uh set of novel smart contracts that allow DeFi protocols to um create further value through like their governance mechanisms um than just um voting <laughs> yeah i maybe i don't know if this is the best example but i liken us to google i guess where um we create a lot of products that that uh provide a lot of value to people's lives and um yeah i think by 2025 we'll at least have i don't know five to ten products new products because we're yeah we're definitely not stopping with with the ones that we have now um like kind of touching what Sammy said about the novels, smart contracts, tracks and stuff. I mean, um, yeah, like ever since we came on, like we nothing has been just completely forked. Like everything has been written or rewritten from the ground up. It, of course, utilizing like existing, um, you know, uh, uh, like audited contracts and things like that, like from Open Zeppelin or Soulmate. Or, um, but uh, yeah, like we're we're really curious and we're really he we're here to. Um, yeah, just create things that actually are valuable to people. Um, ideally, things that don't exist, but yeah. I mean, or if they do exist, like at least something that is a, like leaps, I guess, um, you know, in terms of improvement. So I lied, I guess I have one more question. When easy mode, when hard mode, when will we be able to uh, take action on this? No later than May for sure. Um, and, uh, it's currently with the auditors right now, but, uh, yeah, we're like, we're every single day, um, we're constantly improving security. So, but yeah, uh, definitely no later than May. So, Hey guys, this is after we're done recording, but I thought of a really good, I thought of a question that I think people would be really curious to hear the, their take on. So the question I was going to ask them was, in the Pyrex system, you're gonna you can claim future yield on your tokens. What have you guys decided on what the underlying rewards are gonna be? If it's gonna be CRV, FXX, or or what do they have in mind with the product and its release? So if you decide to go um, easy mode, then the yield will be in the form of CVX. Um, but if you, you know want to take matters into your own your own hands then you'll receive whatever uh tokens we receive from vodium so basically the token that you just mentioned okay well it's because what i it's because usually people they all the bribes most whenever a protocol bribe vodium or well, you the union usually just ends up dumping the, them all anyways yeah but um are you guys are you guys gonna do that as well and then convert it to those tokens or like gonna have like a basket of 20 tokens where someone can claim in the future and then i think you we'll get, leave you it get what up i'm to trying the to user. say i think we'll leave it up to the user like obviously like no one likes claiming um a bunch of different tokens i think 
we'll give flexibility to what people want, but I think we'll try and keep it uh, relative to the whole ecosystem. So something like ETH, something like CVX, uh, CVX, CRV, CRV, like stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> and depending, I guess, like where you want to be on the spectrum of uh, Pyrex, then like it could be many different things. Yeah. If you don't want to collect 20 tokens or, well, okay, it'll never be 20 tokens first off. Like we're, I mean, we love Odium, but we're probably not going to delegate to them because we don't want random tokens. Um, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you just want one token, um, then you would just, um, allow us to auto compound the rewards into more CBX, which actually the union is doing it. So. Okay, I just wanted I just wanted to make sure because I know people are gonna be curious about that because I can already see a mile away. You guys are gonna about to launch a product and they're gonna be like, "Damn, you're telling me uh, like I waited so long for the union to fix this issue just to go back to having like a basket of twenty tokens and like a bunch of random dust." So I'm really I'm really glad that we were able to record again to add this in because I'm pretty sure there's at least this will save you from one last question you have to answer in the future. Thanks, man. Yeah, thanks for asking it. True. And yeah, if anyone else has any other questions, like we, like we're always reachable in our Discord. Kingmaker Podcast.